Hello, uh, my name is James Tierney, and I'm making this video for my Penn State World Campus Econ 304 class, which is Intermediate Macro, but this should be good for anyone who's trying to learn a little bit more about a, a two-period consumption model. So I hope this four-part lesson will help you better understand that model. Uh, you don't have to watch it all the way through. You can stop, pause, take notes, that's fine, uh, but there is going to be four different parts. The first part, we're just going to go over the theory. We're going to just talk about notation, what is meant behind the actual graph of the model. The second part, we're going to go through the math. We're going to find important parts of the graph. Third part, we're going to put those two together. We're going to have the graph. We're going to have the math. We're going to actually plot some points. And the last part, we're going to actually talk about intuition behind these intercepts of the model. We want to make sure that everything makes sense. So let's go ahead and begin with notation. Uh, so this is the notation that is used in the class that I am teaching. Your notation may be a little different. Uh, the notation we're going to be using is pretty straightforward. Y is going to be our current income. YF is going to be our future income. A is going to be our current wealth. AF is going to be our future wealth. C is going to be our current consumption. And CF is going to be our future consumption. As you can see, we've got Y, A, and C for income, wealth, and consumption, and then we just superscript F for future. For this model, we're going to be assuming that every individual is not going to have any income or wealth left over after the future period or after the second time period. Uh, that just means that there's nothing left over, so they're not saving anything for their kids or anything like that. Everything that they save in the current period is going to be consumed in the future period. What this means is that the present value of lifetime resources, so everything that you make, your income and your wealth, is going to equal the present value of lifetime consumption. Or what we're going to say is PVLR is going to equal PVLC. So let's just quickly go over present value. Uh, there's going to be a, a website in a minute that you can go and get extra help if you're not too familiar with it. When we're looking at a two-period consumption model, we need to see the value of the money we are making in the future. And that's because we can consume that money now by borrowing against our future income. Uh, the way we find present value of future income is by dividing the future income by the amount of 1 plus R. That's how we find the present value of that. If we want to see how much we save, we're going to take our current income, multiply it by 1 plus R instead of dividing by it. Uh, if you need more information on present value, Khan Academy has a couple of great videos. Uh, you can use this short Google link uh, to go ahead and go view that video. So let's analyze this graph that we're going to be using. And I want to really understand the theory behind it before we go ahead and put numbers on the axes and find the slope and all that fun stuff. So the graph is going to explore the trade-off between consuming now and consuming in the future. So we're going to put future consumption and current consumption on the axes. You see on the y-axis here, we're going to have future consumption, and on the x-axis, we're going to have current consumption. The equation that we're going to find later on is going to represent the trade-off between consuming now and consuming in the future. It's going to show us all the possible consumption uh, sets, our opportunity sets uh, for consuming now and consuming in the future. Uh, that line's going to go on these axes. It's going to look something like this, depending on the slope. This line is going to tell us these possible consumption bundles that our individual has. Uh, since we assume our individual does not leave any resources left over after the future period, the consumption bundle is going to fall along this line. The intercepts are very interesting. They show us when the individual has decided to do all of their consumption in that period. The vertical intercept will be the value if the individual decides to consume everything in the future, and they don't consume anything in the current period. The horizontal intercept is going to be the value when the individual decides to consume everything in the current period and nothing in the future. The point in the exact middle of this line, which is going to be our 45 degree angle where CF equals C, basically tells us the individual decides to perfectly consumption smooth, meaning that they're going to consume the same amount in the future and in the current period. Now, we know that PVLR is going to equal PVLC because we're not leaving anything left over after the second period. So let's look at each side of this equation separately. Let's go ahead and start with the present value of lifetime resources. And that's going to be composed of the current resources, so we've got Y and A, along with the present value of our future resources. So the present value of Y superscript F and A superscript F. Thus, our present value of lifetime resources is going to be our current resources, which is our current income and our current wealth, 
plus a discounted value, depending on that interest rate, of our future resources, Y superscript F and A superscript F. You can see these are our current resources, these are our future resources, and this is discounting those future resources. PVLC is composed of current consumption along with the present value of future consumption. And so PVLC is going to be our current consumption, it's going to be our future consumption, and we're going to discount that future consumption. Setting those two equal, because we know that we're not going to have anything left over, we get our current income and current wealth, plus our discounted future income and future wealth has to equal our current consumption plus our future consumption discounted. So what are we going to do with this equation? Well, in our two-period consumption model, this equation is going to be graphed on the xy plane. Just like we showed you, we showed you that cf is going to be on the y-axis and c is going to be on the x-axis. This will show us our possible consumption bundles, also known as the opportunity set. So solving the above equation for cf will allow us to graph this line using our basic formula y equals mx plus b. So let's solve for cf by first multiplying every term by 1 plus r, which will cancel the denominators. And that's going to leave us with 1 plus r times y plus a plus y superscript s plus a superscript f is going to equal 1 plus r times c plus cf. If we subtract 1 plus r times c from both sides, we're going to get cf is going to equal 1 plus r y plus a plus y superscript f plus a superscript f minus 1 plus r times c. What we're going to be able to now is we're going to be able to graph this line and show how we can find specific points on our graph. So first we need to find the y-intercept and the slope. That's pretty easy because we know back in elementary school when we learned about graphing lines, we had y equals mx plus b, we know that b was the y-intercept and the m is the slope. And so if we have it in this form right here, our current uh, our cons consumption in the future equals this, we can see that that's going to be our y-intercept because that's actually when c equals 0. That would be the b in our y equals mx plus b. We also know that what's connected to the quote-unquote x value, or our c, is going to be our slope. And so to graph it, this point right here, our cf intercept, is just going to be 1 plus r times y plus a plus y superscript f plus a superscript f and the slope is going to be negative 1 plus r. But what about this point? What about our quote-unquote x-axis when c uh, f, when our future consumption is equal to 0? So let's do that. The horizontal axis is going to be when future consumption is equal to 0, meaning our individual has decided to consume everything now. So we can just set cf equal to 0 and solve for c. I'm simply just going to add 1 plus r times c to both sides. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 1 plus r. And we're going to end up by seeing that current consumption is simply equal to current wealth and income plus a discounted value of our future wealth and income. So back to our graph. We already know what the cf intercept is, and now we can add what our c intercept is. But do these points make intuitive sense? Well, we know that the vertical, vertical intercept represents the point where the individual consumes everything in the future. We also know that the vertical intercept is equal to 1 plus r times y plus a plus our future income and future wealth. But does this make intuitive sense? Well, what this equation is saying is that if an individual decides to only consume in the future, they are able to consume what they have saved, including interest, and all of their future resources. So yes, this makes complete intuitive sense, that that's what it should be when an individual decides to consume everything in the future. Again, we have what they currently have, y plus a, multiplied by 1 plus r, so you're getting all that plus the interest, and you're also getting their future resources, 
yes, this makes intuitive sense. All right, let's move to the horizontal intercept. We know that that represents the point where individuals consume everything in the current period, meaning that they are completely borrowing against their future income. We also know that the horizontal intercept by doing our math is equal to y plus a plus y superscript f plus a superscript f divided by one plus r. Well, does this make intuitive sense? Well, what that equation is saying is if an individual decides to only consume in the current period, they can consume their current resources, y plus a, plus they can also consume a discounted amount of their future resources. Again, this is saying that they can consume their current resources plus a discounted amount of their future resources. So yes, it makes intuitive sense. I hope that helped you with the basics of a two-period consumption model. I will be uploading a video shortly uh, with the basic example where we'll actually throw in uh, some numbers to each of these. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to follow me on Twitter, uh, check out my Facebook page, uh, check out the other instructional videos that I have posted on YouTube. Thanks. Bye-bye.